Hi, Speechy fam. Welcome back to my channel. I have a very fun video today. I want to share five different things you can do your first week of speech therapy with preschoolers. I just went back to work. I'm actually heading into my first week of therapy with my little ones. I do a good blend of push-in therapy as well as pull-out therapy. I'll be starting to do more push-in therapy this year, but I still have things I will bring in as the clinician. And that first speech therapy session, whether you have returning students or new students, it's so crucial because you get to focus on that connection with your little ones and really build meaningful relationships that are crucial to communication. This also sets the tone for future sessions. That rapport building, you know, we learned about it in grad school, but it really is so valuable Valuable that we take that time, however long that is. So I'm here to tell you that rapport building is no joke, but you probably already knew that. So in this video, I wanna explore five fun and engaging ways that you can make your preschoolers first session enjoyable and beneficial to that relationship. I also wanna share some of the toys I like to use in those first sessions to help build that interaction. If you know me from Instagram, you might've already guessed what my first tip for you is, follow their lead and play. Maybe we call this a spin on the classic show and tell. With some of my older students in the past, I have on the first day had them do an all about me activity where they talk about their favorite things. Maybe they write them down, they draw them, and then I know what I can pull out for future therapy sessions. With preschoolers, that might be a little bit different. So my approach with them is definitely just a very open observation kind of style, follow their lead. If I'm doing a pullout session, I bring them into the speech room. Now ahead of time, I like to send home a questionnaire and ask parents what their little ones like, what shows, what toys, like what their typical day is. So I know maybe what to have available for them in the speech room or in the classroom if I'm doing push-in. There are so many questionnaires on TPT that you can find. I use one that I found years and years ago, but basically the gist is, tell me about your child. I can link some here for you too, if that makes your search a little bit easier. And then once you're getting ready for that first speech session, have those toys maybe out on your speech table, on the ground if you're planning on doing some floor play, and see what they gravitate towards, and then join in whatever the play activity is. That's it. Do it for 20, 30, 10 minutes, however long you're seeing them or however long they choose to attend to that given activity. Don't force an agenda. I think the most powerful relationships and connections we can make just are grown organically. When you're playing with the toys they love to play with or doing the things they love to do, you can model language. There's so many opportunities for that. Even if you're just doing movement activities, you can expand on their utterances and you can just sit back and do some observation as well. Another thing you can do leading up to your first sessions is make sure you take time to go into the classroom and observe. Get to know what they're doing, how they're doing it, who they're gravitating towards. Maybe you find two speech students who love hanging out or playing together and you know, oh, hey, I can group them together. That's perfect. I know we like to group based on goals or things like that, which is totally understandable, but sometimes part of following that lead is being creative and figuring out, well, if this student is working on an articulation goal and this student has language goals, but they really enjoy each other's company and there's a really strong connection, why don't I try to figure out how I can accommodate both of them in one session? Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to do. Sometimes it's just not feasible in the way we schedule, but if you can make it happen, make it happen. Tip number two, have a craft. This is a fun way to get their little hands on things and doing things and it sends home something from your first session of speech where the parents can start to feel that connection as well because especially with preschoolers, but really all across the board, we're not only building connections with our clients, but we have opportunities, even as school-based SLPs, to build connections with families. And sending things home and showing student work is a great way to just give that little check-in or the awareness that, you know, your child is being seen for speech, we're having a great time. It gives opportunities too for kids to talk about what they're doing in speech if they're at that level. But when you are utilizing a fun craft to do together, you can also be just, again, kind of back in that observational state where you're observing a student's vocabulary on that first session, watching 
their following direction skills, getting a good sound inventory. There's so many templates for cute crafts, even preschool aged crafts on TPT, but also Pinterest has been a huge, huge game changer for me in the last year. I finally broke that Pinterest. I was so overwhelmed by it and so intimidated by it. I finally just searched preschool crafts and you know got specific about maybe what kind of craft I was looking for and there's so many ideas. And if you type in low prep, you will find low prep and that makes my life so much easier. Okay, activity number three, sing. I have been told by Slippas and other SLPs that have observed my therapy sessions, I have a very, I don't know if this is like a red flag for a speech therapist, but I have a very good skill uh, of dragging out songs. <laughs> Preschoolers love music. They love rhyming, especially our little ones who have language goals. Those rhyming types of things are really fun because we can, in our minds, grab onto familiar phrases and kind of anticipate what comes next and join in and interact. So music and rhymes are powerful already for speech therapy and introducing them on the first day just to have a song that you sing together is so fun. This could be something you find out on that questionnaire, what your student likes to sing or what music they're listening to or what YouTubes they watch. Bonus points if they've seen any of my songs on YouTube, I'm gonna link some. Songs help practice those language and articulation skills, but ultimately, if you're singing, if they love Wheels on the Bus, they love the ABCs, they love Five Speckled Frogs, whatever the songs are, Get to know them if you don't already. Again, they're linked. And then find engaging ways to have your little ones join in. I love using song boards. I just create them with Board Maker and have familiar images or the, the images from routines. You'll see them in my linked videos. How many times am I going to plug my own videos? <laughs> um, but you'll see them there and you can create things that the students can easily manipulate to be engaged. That really is helpful for whether they're limited verbal speakers or they're not yet using words or verbal speech having those modified activities that are tailored to your student's individual developmental level is really helpful. And because they're so fun, songs really help us, again, build that connection. Numero cuatro, bust out the puppets. Now I know not every SLP likes puppets, but puppet play can be a fantastic way to encourage that fun and excitement in that first speech therapy session. You can make up voices and stories and just be silly and goofy and really let your little ones know that, hey, I'm here to have fun. I'm here to be your communication partner. I'm not here to force you to work. And then, you know, you figure out, does this child like the puppets? Do they not? Can I use this for other goals they have in future sessions? And number five, bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Children adore bubbles. Honestly, if you just pull out the bubbles on your first speech session, I guarantee you'll have nearly, nearly, because we don't know, every kid is different and plans can change, but I would say you'd have a 90% guaranteed success rate. Okay, but hear me out. You can already start working on some of those early sounds. You can get some interaction. You can just have fun. While they help us target so many goals, when we're thinking about those first sessions and that relationship-driven communication, bubbles, are a fun activity to do to encourage that enthusiasm and bring that into a session which allows our little ones to say hey every time I go to speech or every time I'm working with Miss M I have fun I'm excited and I have a trusting relationship with all of these ideas make sure that you're getting down to your students level with all these activity ideas make sure at the end of the day you are focused on building that connection whether you pull out the bubbles or the puppets and the student doesn't want them then find out how to follow their lead and get what they want. Get down on their level while you're playing with them. Don't forget that one, that's a key. Make that time to observe, to wait, to be a listener and be mindful about your time with your students. Some other things that you can make sure you have readily available for that first speech session. I have found good success with these things. We've already talked about the first one, bubbles. I also have had pretty good success with the Jack in the Box. Now, I've talked about this before in other videos, but with the Jack in the Box, it can be something that's a little bit startling and that can cause more fear and less trust, right? So when you're playing with it, it's a really fun thing because we can get really excited when the monkey or whatever is in there comes out. But as the clinician, as the person that, you know, has a little bit more maybe ability to control this specific toy, make sure that you have your hand here so when he does pop out, you can control how fast he goes. And it's not as startling, so there's a little bit less chance of tears. Um, and you can still, he's still gonna come jump up and then you can do your, 
oh, we can say hi, monkey. And that's a really fun thing. Kids laugh. Not every kid loves the Jack in the Box. I was not a kid actually that loved the Jack in the Box. I'm not sure if I'm even an adult that loves the Jack in the Box, but I have plenty of kids who love this and I've had really good success. So that is an idea for you. Other fun things, anything that helps with the sensory experience. So whether, you know, you have like the pop tubes that are just fun to play with and manipulate, um, fun toys, silly toys like slinkies where you can make them kind of fall down from different levels of your room if it's on top of a cabinet or a bookshelf. Um, you know, kids like, they like, they like to see their toys fall. Let's do it. Let's find things and ways to do that. And puzzles. Puzzles are really great. If you have a few different puzzles, let's say you know your student loves animals, cars, and colors. <laughs> then have like an animal puzzle out, a car puzzle out, a color puzzle out. Have those things available. See which one they go for. And then with whatever they are doing, interact with them. You know, join in with that play. Make the animal noises. Make the car sounds. Name the colors. Point things out in the room that are also those colors. Do whatever it is that you're going to do with it. But that's a really fun thing to have as well. At the end of the day, I just want you to feel confident in focusing on that connection with your students, whether they're preschoolers or middle schoolers or high schoolers, no matter their age, that you know that there are ways that you can build that connection and that it does take some time with some students to build those connections. So even after the first session, if you still are just focused on that um, and you take two weeks, three weeks, sometimes it takes a month, it's okay. I have a little in-home client that I see and it's been eight months since I've been working with her and I'm finally, finally feeling like we've really broken through on that connection. We just, we stay persistent in following their lead. We stay persistent in focusing on building that trust and that is the goal. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm wishing you all the best in your first speech therapy sessions. And I just want you to know, I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you so much. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you liked. If you have questions about anything, please pop them in the comments. I'll be happy to get you those answers. Have a beautiful rest of your day, a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.